The VDB node and the VDB activate both get used together to create a brand new VDB volume. And so let's talk about the basics of that workflow. Let's talk about why we need those two nodes together. And if you want a more comprehensive and full overview to VDB volumes, then check out Houdini for the New Artist 2, as well as the Node Bible entry where I go over an explanation of VDBs if you've never used them before. When making a VDB volume, we have a few different options for how to do this. Let's say that we have geometry right here. That's when you can use a VDB from Polygon Sop. And no surprise, we get VDBs based off of the mesh that we just converted. We have two main options though, a distance VDB and a fog VDB. And as I explained in Houdini for the New Artist 2, these two things store different values. And so to see those values, we can use a volume slice and we can examine those voxel values in here. So with a distance VDB, we are measuring the distance away from the surface of the mesh by a certain number of voxels. Those number of voxels are down here in the exterior and interior band voxels. And that's essentially how we build out a distance VDB. A fog VDB is much more straightforward. All we do is we fill the object with a value of one, and we have this area, this band on the outside that feathers outwards towards zero. So that's the main gist of what you get from a VDB from Polygon's node, and that information is good to know if you try to build a VDB from scratch just by using a regular VDB SOP. Because one of the first things it asks you in here is whether or not you want a fog, a level set, or a staggered vector field. One of the confusing things about this and about VDBs in general is just the terminology and the naming of things. And so fog volume makes sense. That's kind of like what we have down here, but we don't have SDF. We don't have a distance VDB. Instead, that is considered to be a level set volume right here. So we can say level set and we can understand that as a SDF or a distance volume. That's how level sets typically get used. So in this case, we can set that class right there. Let's call this our surface like so. Here is the data type that's being stored inside those voxels. So again, if you're new to data types, you'll need to check out Houdini for the new artist too. But in this example, we could say a float. In other words, we have decimal values in the number. And the 32 versus 64 bit is asking you how accurate those numbers need to be. So how many decimal places does Houdini need to keep track of when it's trying to figure out the accuracy of the values? Most of the time, 32-bit is just fine. However, for certain simulations and perhaps for really, really low numbers, you may want to consider 64-bit if you find yourself in that situation. So we have this VDB. If we middle mouse, we do have the field, but there's no values in here. So why is that? Well, because when you have VDBs, you need to first of all create the class and the metadata and all the stuff we just set up here to define how this VDB is going to work. And then you need to activate the voxels. In other words, then you need to use the VDB activates to actually add some values. That's a good way of thinking about this in general. So VDB activate. Now, let's say that I take this center and the size and I bring it up, you'll notice that our box is expanding and we now have about 30,000 voxels. So we're actually adding to the VDB. If we take a volume slice, right now everything is a value of one. In the VDB activate, that's what we specify right here. So we can specify the value that we want to make and by default, we have this position tab to fill in that volume. So at this point, you might be wondering, okay, well, we have a value of one. Why don't we see a fog in our viewports? Well, it's because going back to the original VDB node right here, we set this as a level set. 
And if we go to the visualization tab, we see that it's trying to display an ISO contour at a value of zero. In other words, it's going to draw the surface of this where it finds a value of zero. If I set that to a value of one, look at what we have. It's going to try to now make that SDF preview based off of a value of one. Now it's glitching out right here, but this still gives you the general idea of what's going on here, okay? So as we change the class here, you'll notice that this informs Houdini how it should shade this in the viewport. And in general, if you're trying to do any kind of VDB operations on a fog versus an SDF, which is really a level set, it needs to have the proper class in order for certain nodes to work properly and certain display types to show correctly. So that's why we make this first to define all that. And then we fill it with values down here. Okay, so that's really cool, but how would you use this in a more practical sense? Why can't we just, you know, always use the VDB from Polygon's node over here and call it a day? Well, allow me to show you a few miscellaneous reasons why you might want to use this. One reason is because many VDB nodes have a second input right here that's asking for the reference VDB. And if you've watched Houdini for the New Artist 2, then you'll already know that this VDB node right here can be used to tell the VDB from polygons or whatever other VDB node what voxel size it needs to be. So a lot of times people plug that in and they just set whatever voxel size right here to control that. So that's one workflow idea, right? Another reason why is because on this VDB node, we have a really cool option down here that says from camera. And so as you can imagine, let's say that we create a camera in our scene right there. We can check on this from camera, select camera one, and guess what? If we zoom out here, we can actually create the initial area of this VDB based on what the camera sees. So as I change the Z far, notice how it goes further and further out. And I can add some padding right here. Let's say negative 0.1, 1.1, negative 0 0.1, 1.1, to give us some additional padding. Once we have that, we can change the uniform sampling divisions right here. As we turn this up, it's going to add more resolution to what will eventually be filled with values. And then as we go to the VDB activate, you'll notice that, well, we are, you know, activating some of these voxels, but think of this position as if anything lives within this position, then the voxel gets activated. So as we turn this up, it eventually encompasses the entire area that we specified before on this VDB node. So typically when I'm trying to make this camera effect, I'll just go ahead and make this initial frustum, and then I'll go ahead and activate it by just turning up the size here until I have all the voxels filled out. But just so you know, this VDB activate, this position right here is just asking you, okay, if anything lives within an imaginary bounding box this big, then it gets filled with this value. So that's what's happening right there. But anyway, one last thing to know about this volume from camera, which gets used for all kinds of stuff, by the way, um, is if we take a volume slice, what we'll notice is that the voxels themselves are facing diagonally, and that's not good. It's going to error out quite a bit if we leave the shape of those voxels in a diagonal direction right there. So whenever I do this, I also use a VDB resample right here, and I resample this entire fog so that all the voxels are facing in a proper direction. So up and down, not diagonally. All I do is I say use voxel size only. Let's say 0.1 as an example. And we could say force axis aligned. Now, as I do a volume slice, 
we have voxels that are facing in the correct direction. They're no longer diagonal. And so as you go about and try to do things based on what the camera sees, this is a good trick to know. But that's another reason why you might want to use the VDB Activate and the VDB. There are a few other reasons, uh, but for the most part, that's what this gets used for. And well, that's pretty much everything you ought to know as far as the basics are concerned. If you want to know about all these other parameters, again, check out the Node Bible where I go through everything in complete detail. But hopefully this gives you a general understanding of how the VDB and VDB Activate are intended to work. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.